Hello again and welcome once more to ITU Telecom World here in Geneva in Switzerland where I'm talking with Senator Stephen Conroy who is Australia's Minister of Broadband Communications and the Digital Economy. Senator Conroy, welcome. Let's begin at the beginning. We have had a long boom period in telecommunications over the past 10-15 years but in some parts of the world now economies are in trouble less money is being spent. What do you think are the key challenges facing the ICT industry today? Well now is the time to invest in the ICT sector. What we've seen with all the economies that have been struggling is they're looking for new ways to drive growth and productivity and the ICT sector is the way that you can begin to invest in your future economic productivity and growth. So people shouldn't shy away because they're saying, oh, look, times are tough, we can't afford this, we can't afford that. Now is the time to invest in the ICT sector. We're finding in Australia that we're actually encountering skills shortages at the moment. So again, now's the time to start putting in place those educational programs to drive through the next generation of ICT workforce that will start capitalising on the infrastructure and the builds that are being done right now all around the world. What are your expectations of ITU Telecom World 2011 and what message would you like to leave with the delegates and the people who will be watching this interview? The thing that I get the most out of these uh, meetings is the shared sense of passion that people have to want to deliver broadband. Everybody gets it. All governments around the world, the private sector, get that this is the technology, this, this is the future to empower people, to empower economies. And so what we get when we come to ITU and shows like this is we get to share the different experiences. No one country has the answer for, that you can just pick up and replicate everywhere else. Not Australia, not anybody. And sitting listening, as we did this afternoon, to the Russian minister, the Indian minister, uh, talking with the Lebanese minister, listening to the Nigerian minister talk about her pro broadband program, that is the great, uh, the great part to this show that I get. I get to learn what I could do better, learn from uh, the strengths that other people are doing and examine all of that. So I, I really get uh, the importance of these meetings because that shared experience allows us to do it all better. How do you think ICT can best help develop social and economic benefits for the world at large, not just for the developed world? Well, in terms of productivity, if you're talking about how can we boost people's and countries' economic growth, the ICT sector will contribute the vast bulk of productivity into the future. That's unarguable. If you look at the studies, broadband penetration equals more economic growth. So that's why uh, it's so important to stay focused on this. In terms of the social aspects, if I look at the programs that countries are starting to run around the world, including Australia, you talk about improving our healthcare system, improving our education system, improving our care for the aged, improving smart grids and environmental policies. They're the sort of social areas as well as entertainment, as well as the Facebooks, the Twitters, if you look at the impact they've had around the world. Who, would have, who could have thought that Twitter and Facebook could bring down governments? But that's what we're seeing. So there's social aspects, there's uh, government services and there's private sector growth. All of that comes from what we're, why we're here today. A specific question as far as Australia is concerned, you're intimately involved with the National Broadband Network over there. Um, what lessons have you learned in Australia that can be applied to other countries? We're putting the infrastructure in place. We're creating a level playing field so that we create the maximum amount of competition to drive prices down and it's the ubiquity I think is the thing that we're striving for the most. You get the maximum benefit from the National Broadband Network if everybody is connected. We're not leaving anybody behind. We're, we are making sure the digital dividend closes, probably for the first time ever. The digital dividend will close. But the other things that we hope to be able to share with the world is the improvements in aged care or health. We're running trials. We're looking at how we can manage people who have diabetes in their home so that they can monitor themselves at home. Because all the international studies show if you can keep your blood sugar level between certain parameters, you save the health budget millions and millions of dollars. We have kids in schools in remote areas of Australia that are now taking classes that they would have had to leave town to take before or just 
worse, not get access to these classes because they're now video linked into classes being held in other centres who do have the population sizes, who do have the density to provide that full array of educational choice. So we've now got kids in Australia in remote areas of Australia that are getting full educational choice for the first time. So those are just two of the areas we hope to be able to showcase to the world of the improvements that we'll make in health and education over the next few years. A final question to you, Senator Conroy. Can you think of one thing that you can tell us you think needs to happen to get us closer to the ITU's mission of giving more global citizens more meaningful access to connected technology? I think the key is leadership. I think the key is a desire to reach everybody, the ubiquity. That is the, the key message that I would give to people. You've got to have the leadership, the desire to reach everybody ubiquitously. Senator Stephen Conroy, thanks very much.